Hello everyone, and welcome to our series of webinars featuring tips and tricks for Autodesk Inventor. My name is Dan Williams, and I'm a Manufacturing Applications Engineer for Repro Products Incorporated. Today we're going to be talking about some topics that I found particularly useful, but rarely get addressed in training. We will talk about a number of topics related to how we might control the position or configuration of sub-assemblies within the context of a larger assembly. Flexible and adaptive are properties of subassemblies that allow the modeler to overcome the default behavior of Inventor and that it treats subassemblies as if they were frozen, ignoring their internal degrees of freedom. I think most of us are aware of the fact that in Inventor, when you have an assembly that has subassemblies, and those subassemblies have some sort of a degree of freedom, when you're at the top level of the assembly, if you try to evaluate it via a constraint based drag or any other way, Inventor doesn't actually look into those subassemblies for degrees of freedom. Over the years, a number of different solutions have been put forward to this situation. I've even seen people save copies of the subassemblies to different names so that they could specify them in different, different positions. However, that has an impact on the bill of material, so we really don't want to try to use that as a solution. One solution that's been proposed over the years is a property for the subassembly called adaptive. Now, uh, if I edit one of these subassemblies and I look at the constraint that prevents that cylinder, for instance, from extending and compressing, that's this stroke constraint, notice that I've suppressed it. So, one would intuitively think at the top level of the assembly, I should be able to drag this around. But that's not the case, again, because Inventor doesn't look into those subassemblies by default for any degrees of freedom. So if I were to take that cylinder or any one of these three cylinders and give it the property adaptive, essentially what I'm telling it now is that Inventor should look inside that subassembly for degrees of freedom. And in fact, I can drag the, the assembly but you'll notice that every one of those cylinders has to be in exactly the same position. Let's go ahead and look at a little bit uh, simpler example of that. I want to turn off adaptivity here, and I'm going to create a new subassembly. Let's use a standard inch assembly. And in that subassembly, I want to take one of those cylinders and just instance it. Now in this subassembly, I'm going to go ahead and instance one more copy of it. And I'll ground it. So notice that when I go to place the first cylinder, or, or actually give the first cylinder the property adaptive, as I manipulate its position, both, both cylinders or both instances are basically identical. That's kind of a problem in an assembly like our like our arm assembly here, because in real life we would want each of those three cylinders to be potentially in a different configuration. There's another limitation to adaptive in that only one instance of the cylinder assembly can be adaptive anywhere. In other words, now that it's adaptive in this assembly, I couldn't go back in this assembly right here and make another instance adaptive. It just doesn't work that way. So there are obviously some limitations to adaptivity. I'm just going to go ahead and start over again, and this time I'm going to look at making both of these subassemblies flexible. Now, notice that I can make more than one instance flexible. That's encouraging. And now that both of these instances are flexible, notice that I can position each of them independently of the other. So let's go back to the original assembly and look at the example where we make one of these adaptive. 
And notice that we really only have one type of motion we can describe here, where all three cylinders are in exactly the same configuration. But if we turn off the adaptive property for one of the cylinders and then make all three flexible, you can see that we can pretty much describe any position for the arm assembly. Thanks again for joining us for this Inventor Tips and Tricks webinar. If you found anything useful, if you'd like more, then certainly we'd like to hear from you. You can contact us at www.reproproducts.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. My name is Dan Williams. I'm a manufacturing applications engineer here at Repro Products.